Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I get a review for you of this little watch that simply will not lay flat on the table, and that is the uh, Sunto Core. The Sunto Core is uh, by Sunto, which is a uh, Finnish company, and uh, it's another interesting in the uh, line of ABC watches, where you get time, you get altitude, you get barometer, and you get a compass built into there. So we can see that that direction is relatively north, which contrasts with my early reviews in which upwards was east. So anyways, um, keep that in mind as you're doing this. But anyways, this is an ABC watch, so you've got all those features alongside some of the other things that are more classically watchy, like an alarm or a countdown timer, little things like that. So there you go. Um, let's do a quick size comparison because holy crap is this thing big. Uh, right here is a uh, standard uh, U.S. quarter. So you can see the face of this guy is rather large. Compare this to the Cassiopeia W3000T. You can see that this is still meaningfully larger. Compared to an Omega Seamaster Aquaterra here. In, uh, I believe that's 41. No, I may be full of it. This right here is a Citizen um, the Eco Drive Perpetual Diver. This right here is a Casio Oceanus. And uh, this is a an old school Casio ABC watch. The uh, Casio... ATC 1200, that's the number. But anyways, we can see here that this guy is, shall we say, large. Oh my god, large. And on my wrist, which is relatively small, it is borderline comical. Let's just be real here. So anyways, that's the size, and uh, I want to thank my buddy Jim for sending this guy along as a loner. It's very nice that I've gotten the chance to take a look at this guy. And uh, now let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this particular wristwatch. Okay, so on the good side, first off, I'm actually a fan of the strap. You can see you've got a very rubbery strap here, and it's a little more soft and supple than most of these straps. So it feels pretty good on the hand. One of the thing I want to highlight is this little tongue right here. Hopefully you can see it. There you go. In the, uh, the keeper here. What that means is that for a guy like me with relatively small wrists, you really need that keeper because it keeps the, uh, well, the tail of the uh, strap from flapping around all day, which is really ugly. But having this little tongue in the keeper means that the tongue can slot into one of these holes and the keeper stays put. It doesn't move around and the band itself stays put. There's very little for this strap to catch on when it's on your wrist, even if you've got small wrists. And so that little tongue built into the keeper is, uh, I don't know if it's an innovation, but it's sure nice and I appreciated it very much. So I wanted to highlight it. Next thing, uh, well, I got this off the wrist here is the uh, the back of it. You can see here that Sun uh, core and whatnot, uh, but it's actually got a little slot right in the middle of it here on the back, and all you need to do to change the battery is to take a coin or something like that and just put it in there and turn. And you can turn and turn and turn, and next thing you know, the battery is exposed, and you can drop in the battery, which is easily available. It's a CR2032 battery. You can pick those up at most grocery stores, at least here in the States. Nice. And it means that even if you run out of juice, you're not going to have to go to a jeweler to get a re-up. That's a beautiful thing. Next thing, it's got a rotating compass bezel, which basically allows you to um, set in your heading, and then just make sure that north is pointed at that heading from the compass... Uh, here we go, move the compass mode here. Yeah, just make sure that the north marks are pointed at that heading and you're going to be good to go. Um, it's a little little thing, but it can be very helpful if you're actually planning to do any orienteering with your watch here. Nice. Next thing, the readability of this guy at angles is actually pretty good. A lot of your LCD watches suffer in that if you're any, even a little bit oblique, you stop being able to read them. But this guy actually has a fair amount of readability even at the oblique angles. I mean, half of that is for, well, I, I, part of that's just because the, the, the numbers are so damn big. I mean, uh, somebody in a 747 flying overhead can probably read your watch on a good day with this guy. But at the same time, um, it is nice to see a little bit of that extra readability from the different angles. Sure, there are going to be angles, and it's not going to match something like an analog watch where there are really hands that you can look down at and see in real space, but it's still a nice little touch. Um, that's good. The uh, countdown timer I got to give credit for. So on the time menu here, if you hit view, you can see that you can get the date and the day. Uh, you can get the seconds. You can get an alternate time zone, which is also a very nice little thing, by the way. Um, you can get sunrise, sunset, you can get a uh, stopwatch, which I'm starting and stopping there. 
which is nice. And then you can get a little countdown timer where if I start this going, it just immediately starts counting down from five minutes. You can set the amount if you'd like in the, um, in the settings for the watch, but that's a nice little thing. I'm a big fan of that because it makes it very straightforward to instantly start a timer for a fixed amount of time. If you work in a lot of different industries, or frankly, if you really like tea and you, you know, okay, I want two minutes to steep my tea, your watch will beep at you two minutes later and it's very easy to reach down and start that timer. And I gotta say, the, uh, the, the alarm, as well as the uh, timer beep, is surprisingly loud. It's not like, oh my God, but you can definitely hear it even from across a room. So that stopwatch countdown timer thing is a beautiful thing. And the loudspeaker going with it is nice as well. So that's actually what's good here, is that you get this nice little countdown timer. You get a nice loudspeaker for the alarm and everything else. You can hear it as I'm manipulating the buttons here. Uh, you get good at angle readability, a rotating compass bezel, easily replaceable battery, and a very nice rubber strap, all told. Let's talk about what's great about this watch. So the great thing here, 100%, is the display in that it is just beautiful. Um, it's nice, it's large, it's readable. It's got just enough curvature to it. It's not catching too much in the way of light and reflection. I mean, sure, certain reflections can be a problem, but for the most part, this is a, a very readable and very beautiful display, but it gets even more beautiful, for instance, when you're looking at this graph here. This is a graph of barometric pressure over time. And considering can compare this to what you get on the Casio, which is, you know, showing the same thing, although given we're in different units of measurement here. But nonetheless, you can see here that this is giving you a great deal more detail on the barometric trend than this guy is. That's a nice little affair. And it just highlights how much power this little display here has. That display also gives you some other options. Um, in addition to having, when you're in time mode, taking seconds around the edge here, figure out what time it actually is. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to be in another mode. I hit view there. There we go, you get ticking seconds around the corner, so it's 15, 16, so forth. But you can also get day-date display, you can get that second time zone, you can get running seconds. The second time zone thing is nice, especially if you're somebody who needs to know, oh, what time is it in Johannesburg right now? This is Andy there. Um, and, you know, you can also get this little arrow up at the top here, which gives me the current barometric trend which means if I'm out hiking and I see that this is taking a dive, then I should probably stop hiking soon because it's about to get real. Um, so those are just beautiful, beautiful things. And so the display on the whole here offers a lot of real estate, uh, which is a double-edged sword, but it uses it fairly well. And so you can get some really pretty displays relative to a lot of your boring LCD sorts of watches. So that's what's great, the display. Let's talk about what's not so great, the bad. Okay, so on the bad side, I got a bunch of nitpicks and a couple of substantive issues. Um, first off, I have been informed by my fiancé that this watch is just ugly as sin. Relative to anything else I have ever worn, she called this one out. She saw this on my wrist after I got it and said, Nick, Nick, oh, hold on. Hey, did you buy that? Is that yours? And I, I, I said no. She said good, because that thing is ugly as sin. And she doesn't tend to make those sorts of comments, so I'm assuming this is pretty salient. So, gents, if you're looking for high fashion, you're probably not going to want to go with your Sunto Core here. Moving along. The uh, compass on this guy does occasionally require a recalibration. When I got this guy, it only said that the, uh, that, you know, any direction you were pointing it in was around 250 degrees. Um, the recalibration process is easy, though. You quite literally just take the compass and you rotate it slowly around 360 degrees, like five or six times, then suddenly it realizes, oh, hey, that's north. And then since then, it's been pretty accurate. Um, mind you, it's not perfectly accurate. That is due north right there. Um, uh, but, oh, now it's trying to, but you see it drifts around a little bit, whatever. Anyways, uh, be ready for that recalibration and know that it might have to happen. Speaking of nitpicks, I'm going to nitpick the accuracy of a quartz watch here. This guy is running about 0.8 seconds a day fast, which means that in a month you'll be about 30 seconds a day fast. Is this actually a problem for roughly anybody? No, and compared to most mechanical watches, this is oh my god accurate. However, it seems a little weird to me that they didn't bother with a higher accuracy quartz movement in this. And some of Casio's very basic stuff, a basic Omega quartz movement, uh, a Citizen, their Eco Drive movements, by and large, all run much more uh, accurately than this guy does. And that's a little bit disappointing given the price of this watch and the fact that it's meant to be all self-sufficient and whatnot. 
Whatever, not a big deal. Um, they're picking here. The bezel on this guy feels honestly terrible. Um, compared to an actual bezel on an actual watch like this guy here, which has a very nice positive feel, and this guy is just like I'm sliding plastic on plastic with lumps. It's, it's ugly as heck. I hate using this bezel as a result. Speaking of plasticky, this watch is pretty much entirely plastic. The only metal that I can find is right here on this back piece. The, um clip here, and then these screws. Everything else is a polymer of some variety. Now, mind you, polymer's plenty durable. There's not a huge problem there. But it does end up feeling a little bit, well, plasticky. And I got a very strong bias towards metal-on-metal metal construction here. And so, for me, that was unsatisfying. Maybe not for you. Um, next issue for me, and this is getting into things that are much more substantial, not just nitpicks, is that the uh, band on this guy is proprietary. You can see here that there are screws that go into the side of it, and then the whole band kind of uh, hugs up against the side of the face here. Um, that means that this is pretty much the only band that will fit this guy out of the box, and you can buy a set of adapters that give you an articulated lug that can take like a NATO strap, but because it's articulated, it looks really funky, and I don't know. This is basically a watch that you're buying that has just this one strap and maybe other colors made by Sunto. And that little adapter is like 60 bucks anyways, which is ugly itself. So um, you, you can't count on the ability to get this guy on another bracelet or on another band. Uh, there's, there's not even a bracelet option available here. So there you go. Um, that's That's ugly. Well, it's ugly and bad. Probably could be ugly. Whatever. Moving along. Next thing that is probably just bad, because it is more subjective, is that this guy is huge. I mean, seriously. There are a lot of people who like big watches. Dinner plates are in style. But especially for a guy like me with smaller wrists, this is basically hilarious. It looks like I've got a dinner plate on my wrist so I can put a little bit of guacamole on there and just dip my chip on it every so often. Um... That's, it's kind of crazy, to be honest with you. Um, this is big to the point that it's just like, really? Really? And it looks very, very off. So if you don't have huge wrists, this is probably not going to be a great choice for you. Um, but I will say it actually wears a little bit smaller than the measurements make it sound. Because these lugs kind of dive away, it looks like you've just got this disc hovering on your wrist. There aren't additional kind of lugs out to either side like there are on this guy. So, I don't know, it just feels freaking huge to me. Then finally, speaking of huge, the price tag is a little huge on this. You're looking at 319 bucks, although you can often get deals and things like that. That's... That's a lot of money. That's putting it right up in line with the very best in Casio's ProTrek line here. That's putting it in line with some really high-end Citizen Nico Drive stuff. This is an expensive watch. Um, and as we'll talk about in the ugly, it doesn't actually come to feature parity with a lot of ones in the similar area. So um, that's what's going on on the bad side. It's expensive. It's huge. The band is proprietary. And then a bunch of nitpicks. Like, it feels very plasticky. The bezel's not so great. It's not so accurate. Compass does require regular recalibration. And fashion-wise... Well, this isn't going to be winning you any awards. So, uh, there you go. Let's go ugly real quick. Okay, so on the ugly front here um, are actually four issues that this watch, well, where it's just way behind the curve relative to other ABC options and, frankly, relative to other modern watches. First of those is that there is no solar charging on this. Many modern watches have solar panels in the face, either in a little ring around the outside, built into the plastic underneath here, or built in underneath the face, that allow these watches to charge all the time. Anytime that there's light, these watches are going to be charging. And this means that you basically don't think about the battery. Maybe every 10 years you replace a, trend, uh, a uh, capacitor or something along those lines. But that's, that's really it. This guy has no solar charging, despite all this room for solar panels. And that's a big absence. Um, however, not every quartz watch is solar. Um, and in fact, you do get other quartz, well you have to replace batteries. That was the default for a long time. However, the battery life on this guy is also surprisingly low. This is a huge watch, so you'd expect they could put in a nice big battery. But unfortunately, the battery life on this guy is about a year. I haven't owned this for the full year, obviously. I haven't owned it at all. But on the blogosphere, most people are agreeing that it's about plus or minus a year here, and that's pretty damn low. Um, the fact that you can change it easily at home is helpful, but I just... Come on. 
the fact that they're only doing a year, they're not doing so, uh, the power just doesn't blow me away on this. One of the biggest advantages of going the courts, the complicated route, is the ability to do better than that, and they, they just didn't. So that feels lazy to me, and it's, it's pretty ugly. Next thing that's a little lazy and a little ugly is the fact that this has no rota uh, wow, radio control, and it's got no GPS to get the time from an external source. A lot of your modern watches, like this Casio again, and like this Casio Oceanus, actually have a little radio antenna, and every night they listen for a radio signal from... Uh, well, an atomic radio uh, time channel, basically. And in, uh, many places in the world are covered by these signals, and so every day when I wake up, I know that this watch is dead-on accurate. Same thing with this guy. If I see this little triangle, I know that it talked overnight to the radio control people and that it is in the proper, uh, well, proper adjustment. It is exactly that time. This watch does not have that. And that's disappointing, because this is a huge watch. It's not like this is a tiny little fashion watch. It's not like this is a watch that has very little going on with it, and it's trying to be uncomplicated. But a watch this big and this complicated should be able to pull down an external time signal. Heck, if it's this big, it should be doing GPS, uh, which is what a lot of your modern systems are doing, and that works anywhere in the world. But this just seems really behind the times, trying to be a super complicated wrist computer that has no way of getting external time, especially when it's not all that accurate for quartz. And then finally, and the ugliest of uglies here, is the water resistance. The water resistance on this guy is 30 meters or 100 feet. That's, that's bad. Um, you know, look, it's going to be okay. In It's basically splash-proof, water-resistant. So, you know, sure, you can wash the dishes wearing this guy. You can wash your hands, no concern. If you get caught in a rainstorm, you'll probably be a-okay. And heck, maybe if you get fall into a river and you get out quickly, you're not going to have a big problem. But at three atmospheres water resistance, it's not considered safe to swim, or to shower, or to bathe with this watch. Any sort of pressurized water is not going to be a good idea. Diving is right out. This water resistance level is a little bit below what a lot of your fashion watches like your Shinolas are, are putting in their, their, their fancy little pieces. Most people aim for five, but the fact that this is only three atmospheres is... That's just deeply ugly. I just... That feels so incredibly lazy. If you're making a watch that's supposed to be hardcore functional tool, why are you making it so vulnerable to an element that we require to survive? That's just bad, and that's just ugly. So, um, that's, that's your ugly here, is the fact that it's got very little water resistance relative to every modern wristwatch out there, certainly in the functional or tactical sort of variety. It's got no radio control or GPS, so you're relying on the inaccurate interior quartz movement relative to quartz, that is. Um, it's got only a year of battery life, and there's no solar charging to rectify that. So that's a whole bunch of ugly that leaves this watch a little bit behind the curve. So let's just go to your final conclusion here. Look, ultimately, this watch was kind of a disappointment, because on the surface, there's a lot of good here, and it is not a bad watch, strictly speaking. It's It's got some very nice features. Um, you know, it's got that beautiful display on there, and all of the functions seem to work pretty well. The barometer, this is just gorgeous, and the compass works just fine. I mean, it, it's a fine watch in that way, but the thing is, by comparison, looking at what else is available in the watch world, this falls really flat, because it's absolutely huge. Um, it's got no solar charging, no radio control, uh, the battery life is just not that impressive, and the, it's not waterproof in any meaningful way for a functional watch, and so... Ultimately, I just don't recommend this guy. If you're after some sort of an ABC watch, you might consider the Casio ProTrek uh, 3000 here or the 3500, the bigger guy. Um, this, although it's got some, you know, it's got its own little faults here, and I got a full review of this guy up, um, it ha makes up for the biggest failings of the other guy. It's solar, it's radio controlled, it's, and it's just a really excellent timepiece. And it's, under, it's plenty of water resistant. Either way, I just like this watch way more. And, well, it's about the same price. So, at the end of the day, interesting watch, huge watch, great for keeping guacamole on the wrist. But beyond that, I can't really say I'm recommending it. So, there you go. That's your Sunto Core. And, uh, yeah, sorry. Hope you enjoyed this, that I made the right call and I pointed you in the right direction. 
Get it? It's a compass joke. But mostly that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.